Raised by Wolves is a new sci-fi show about robots and religion on an alien world, life and death and parenting, ghosts and snakes and necromancers, virtual reality, prophecy, secret identities, ancient alien megaliths with strange fiery holes, and sex with God in milk. MILK! It's got this fella and this bloke with the hat and there's whatever this is and and then, and then the snake happens. There's a lot of crazy stuff going on. So what happens in Raised by Wolves, and what does it mean? In the future, the world is dominated by a religious group called the Mithraic. They're loosely inspired by a real religion called Mithraism that was popular in ancient Rome alongside early Christianity. In the real world, Christianity became popular and Mithraism faded away. But in Raised by Wolves, the Mithraic take over, and Christianity falls. In one episode, we see this painting that looks like Christ on the cross being cast down, with the Mithraic sun rising above. Because the Mithraic worship a sun god called Sol, and they preach about light and purity. Their practices are similar to Christianity, with communion and baptism and atonement for sin. But years ago, the Mithraic discovered that in their holy scriptures, there were formulas and blueprints encrypted into the text that allowed them to build advanced technology, like quantum gravity spaceships, dark photon energy, and necromancers. Necromancers are powerful robots used as weapons of mass destruction. They can fly and change their appearance and use frost and heat breath, and their scream and their gaze can explode people. Ridley Scott, who's a producer on the show, says their design was based on a statue of Atlas in New York. So the necromancers represent a terrifying, destructive power that seems both technological and godlike. The Mithraic and their necromancers waged a holy war to take over the world and wipe out all other religions. The resistance against the Mithraic were called the Atheists. They didn't have advanced technology like necromancers, so the Atheists used child soldiers, even child suicide bombers, in the war. According to the official comic, the Atheists blanketed the Earth with bombs. The bombs failed to stop the necromancers and left the Earth uninhabitable. Others blame the Mithraic for ruining the Earth, so it's unclear whose fault it was, but either way, the Mithraic and the Atheists both seem awful, and their war wrecked the Earth. There wasn't enough oxygen, animals went extinct, it seemed that everything on the planet would die. So the Mithraic built an Ark to carry a thousand refugees to a new world, a planet called Kepler-22b, which is a real exoplanet in a distant star system. But the Atheists didn't have an Ark, so they were screwed. Episode 2 follows Caleb and Mary, two Atheist soldiers living off rats in the ruins of Boston. They find two Mithraic officers called Marcus and Sue who have passes to board the Ark, so Caleb and Mary kill Marcus and Sue and get plastic surgery to look like them and steal their identities and get on the Ark to escape the dying Earth. The thing is, Marcus and Sue had a son called Paul, so Caleb and Mary not only join their enemies and pretend to be Mithraic believers, they also have to play mother and father to a child whose real parents they murdered. The Ark takes 13 years to fly to Kepler-22b. So the Mithraic's bodies are put into hibernation, while their minds are plugged into a digital simulation, so they can hang out and pray and play Duck Duck Goose for 13 years. And in that time, Caleb and Mary come to genuinely love Paul as a son. Mary is unable to have kids, so despite her atheism, getting Paul is like a miracle for her. Within their fake Mithraic identities, Caleb and Mary become a real family with Paul. But when the Ark arrives at the promised land of Kepler-22b, it turns out that someone else got there first. Back on Earth, there was this mysterious atheist guy called Campion Sturges, and he had a plan for a new hope for humanity. He captured a necromancer and reprogrammed her to be a mother. He put mother and an android called father and a bunch of frozen human embryos in a small fast ship and sent it to Kepler-22b. 
He programmed the androids to raise these humans in a peaceful, atheistic society, hoping to avoid the problems that caused war on Earth. So in episode one, mother and father arrive on Kepler-22b. It's a harsh, primordial landscape, but there's breathable air and Earth-like plants. Mother and father wear goofy grey outfits that make them look naked like Adam and Eve in the Bible when they start life in a new world. Because mother was modified to grow their frozen human embryos into babies, so the death-bringing necromancer becomes a life-giving mother. She uses these six feeding tubes on her chest that look like the nipples of an animal, because the show's title, Raised by Wolves, is a reference to the legend of Romulus and Remus, children who were raised by a she-wolf. Mother is compared to a wolf in the show, and she's a non-human raising kids, just like the she-wolf. According to the legend, Romulus founded the city of Rome, just as mother's children are to start a new human civilization. So mother and father raise six human children on this alien world. They build a little settlement, farm for food, and form a strange little family. As androids, mother and father aren't meant to have real emotions, but they develop quirky personalities and come to love their children. But the planet has dangers and mysteries. They find the bones of some giant serpents, and the surface is dotted with huge deep pits. A child called Tally falls in and dies. Four more children die of a sickness until only the youngest remains, a boy called Campion. So the colony seems doomed, but that is when the Ark arrives, with a thousand Mithraic on board. Father thinks Campion should join them, but Mother sees the Mithraic as a threat. She's committed to an atheistic colony, and seems to be malfunctioning, overwhelmed with grief for her kids. So Mother temporarily kills Father, and when the Mithraic try to take Campion, Mother goes on a rampage and destroys the Ark. She kills a thousand humans, probably the majority of all humans left. She only saves five Mithraic children to join Campion in their colony. At first, these kids hate and fear Mother. They try to escape, and Campion tries to steal her eyes, which she needs to use her deadly powers. But Mother and Father persist in protecting and caring for the kids, and eventually, most of them come to love their new family. The eldest girl, Tempest, quickly rejects her Mithraic faith. Because while she was in hibernation on the Ark, a Mithraic priest raped and impregnated her. Mother supports Tempest as she struggles with the trauma and the anger and the baby inside her. But Hunter stays loyal to the Mithraic. He comes from an upper-class family and is often kind of a pompous douche. Holly is close with the youngest child, Vita. And the fifth Mithraic kid is Paul, the adoptive son of Caleb and Mary. Paul is quiet and clever and makes friends with Campion. So this strange family struggles to survive on Kepler-22b. They're attacked by mysterious humanoid creatures, and they find out the food they've been growing makes kids sick, so they start eating the creatures instead, solving both problems. Mother and father have arguments about how to raise the kids. Mother tends to be more strict, while father's more sentimental and permissive. As a necromancer, Mother is much more powerful than Father, and he sometimes feels that she doesn't respect his efforts, and he hasn't forgotten that, you know, she killed him that one time. So there's drama and survival, and increasingly, weird shit happens. They start seeing the ghost of Tally, the kid who fell down a pit, and Paul's pet mouse falls into a pit, but then miraculously comes back. It's like things don't stay dead on this planet. And Mother makes a discovery in the woods. The ghost of Tally leads Mother to a simulation pod from the crashed Ark. She uses it to access memories of her creation by Sturges on Earth. She realises that Sturges loved her and becomes obsessed with him. Sturges seems to come alive within the simulation. So he and Mother have crazy, trippy VR sex in a waterfall of milk beneath the stars. And inexplicably, miraculously, Mother gets pregnant. 
This robot gets pregante from divine cybersex like a sci-fi Virgin Mary, and then Virtual Sturges tells Mother that this new baby is her true mission. That her human kids were just a practice run, and this baby is the true future for humanity. So Mother questions everything about her creator and her purpose. This pregnant atheist android has a crisis of faith. Meanwhile, a bunch of Mithraic survived the destruction of their Ark, including Caleb and Mary, and the Mithraic discover a mysterious stone in the desert that fulfills a Mithraic prophecy. According to their scripture, in the Holy Land there are five temples with five pointed pentagonal sides, and these temples hold the answers to the Mithraic mysteries, the deepest secrets of their faith. So the Mithraic start to worship this temple. But the secret atheists, Caleb and Mary, don't care, they just want to go and find Paul. So Caleb confronts the Mithraic leader, Ambrose, and suddenly Caleb hears mysterious voices in his head, and then the stone temple miraculously burns Ambrose to death. Caleb declares this soul's judgement, and becomes a prophet and a leader to the Mithraic. So Mary still just pretends to be religious, but Caleb gradually becomes a believer for real, and embraces his role as a prophet. We get flashbacks to Caleb's past as a child soldier on earth. He had always been powerless and exploited, but as Marcus the prophet, everyone follows him, and the power is intoxicating. Caleb leads the Mithraic to find their kids, and along the way they encounter a mysterious masked man. Apparently there are native people living on Kepler-22b. The Mithraic find Mother's settlement and reunite with their kids, and Paul and Hunter betray Mother and Father, so they get captured. Caleb takes Mother's eyes so that she can't weaponize, and he tries to kill Mother, but then the mysterious voice of Sol tells him to let her live. The voice promises that Marcus will be king of this world. So Caleb was an atheist just days ago, but suddenly now he's a prophet hearing God's voice, and it's cool, but he doesn't know what Sol wants from him. He gets aggressive and controlling and self-destructive. He has crazy visions and loses touch with his identity. He has a hallucinatory knife fight with himself, where Marcus kills his past identity as Caleb. It's like the fight at the end of Fight Club, but like if Tyler Durden won. So Marcus goes full crazy, and Mary and the kids and mother and father all escape him. Marcus prays to Sol for guidance, begging to know his destiny, but he is nothing. His God and his family and his sanity all abandon him. The other Mithraic figure out that this Marcus isn't really Marcus, so they beat him up and force him to swallow Mother's necromancer eyes. And you are not meant to eat those, they're full of dark photon energy, it's like swallowing some potent magic plutonium, it does things to his body and his mind. So in the finale, Marcus is broken and mad, and has nothing but a deranged belief in his own divinity. Meanwhile, Mother discovers that the fetus inside her is hungry for blood, so she captures a Mithraic guy called Otho and drains his blood to feed her baby. Otho was a high-ranking priest on the Mithraic Ark, and he was the one who raped Tempest. Otho says he did it because Sol told him to, but now Sol has stopped speaking to him, no matter how much he prays, just like how Sol abandons Marcus. Otho attacks the group, so Tempest kills him, finally getting vengeance and closure. Mother bonds with Mary, because they're both parents to children who aren't biologically theirs. Mother is an android raising humans, and Mary is raising Paul, whose real parents she killed. They prepare for Mother to give birth, and the kids get excited, thinking that the baby is a divine child of Sol. And Paul starts hearing Sol's voice. His pet mouse, who miraculously returned, leads Paul to some mysterious cave paintings that hint at human life on this planet, and then the voice tells Paul the truth about his parents, that the woman he thinks is his mum actually murdered his real parents. So Paul shoots Mary. 
Mary survives, but suffers from the guilt and rejection of the boy she loved as a son. Paul runs off into the night. It seems that Sol has chosen a new instrument. Father finds out that Mother is pregnant, and he's angry that Mother lied to him and kept secrets from him, and, you know, cheated on him with the virtual milk god to get robot pregnant, and now she's saying that maybe this baby is their new mission? Father is so upset that he considers wiping his own memories like Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, but then that mysterious masked man attacks Mother, so she kills him. And it turns out that he's a devolved human. Meaning, there were once human beings on Kepler-22b, but for some reason they evolved into these animalistic creatures. This masked man is part of a group who kept some of their humanity and memories. He has these metal cards that give Mother a vision of, like, a cult and a box, but before she figures it out, Mother gives birth. And it's not a human baby, it's a serpent. A flying snake bursts from her mouth, and it bites her to drain her blood. This horrific scene is inspired by the real-world religion of Mithraism. Because the central image in Mithraism is the tauroctony, the ritual sacrifice of a bull. The sacrifice happens in a cave, just like this birth happens in a cave. It often includes an image of the sun god, Sol. And there's this serpent drinking blood from the bull's wound, just like this serpent drinks from mother. There's also a dog on the wound and a scorpion on his nuts, so the analogy isn't perfect, but clearly there's inspiration here from this ancient Mithraic image of sacrifice. Mother realises she was bamboozled. That virtual Sturges tricked her. He wasn't really her creator, the human Sturges from Earth. This was some illusion by some entity manipulating her into birthing a serpent. Mother gets afraid that the snake will hurt her family, so mother and father try to kill the snake by flying into a pit, sacrificing themselves. But the pit opens up into this strange planetary core. They approach it like sperm to an egg, and when they enter, they don't die. They inexplicably pass through the core and come out the other side of the planet intact. This region is lush with trees and plants, but in this garden, the serpent grows. Again evoking the Garden of Eden in the Bible. So, this season finale, titled The Beginning, connects way back to Genesis. So, that is basically what happens in Raised by Wolves, but what is actually going on with the snakes and the god and the ancient humans? Showrunner Aaron Guzikowski has given some hints in interviews which allow us to piece it all together. Clearly, there's some godlike power or entity on Kepler-22b. It makes Marcus and Paul hear voices. It brings back the ghost of Tally and Paul's mouse. The entity hacks into Mother's memories and uses this fake virtual Sturges to impregnate her with a serpent baby. And it uses its influence on Marcus and Paul to ensure the serpent is born. The voice tells Marcus not to kill Mother and tells Paul that the baby is important. The Mithraic do what the voice says because they interpret it as the voice of their god, Sol. And there clearly is some connection between this planet and Mithraic religion. Their scripture predicted that there would be these temples with five-pointed sites and demons beneath the earth. But Sol is not exactly what the Mithraic think he is. The fake Sturges says that humans just destroy themselves, but Mother's baby is the real future. So this god does not love humans, it loves snakes. It sounds like the entity once tried to help humans, but they sucked, so Sol joined Team Serpent instead. Because all of this goes back thousands of years. These metal cards from the Masked Man seem to reveal visions of the planet's ancient past. This cult with this box seemed to be performing a ritual to birth a serpent. The showrunner says that this box is a birthing prison, with a pregnant android inside. The helmet it's wearing has this nozzle for the baby serpent to come out. Notice that the cage is a dodecahedron with pentagonal sides, just like the pentagonal temple, 
So maybe the people who made this cage also made the temples to worship the serpents and the entity as a god. Maybe the purpose of this hole in the temple is for a serpent to come out. These mysterious ancient humans are the ancestors of the devolved people and creatures who now live on the planet. The showrunner says something caused these human beings to hide underground and adapt to the dark. It sounds like the Morlocks or the Falmer. He says they were escaping from whatever was on the surface. So maybe the serpents took over the surface, forcing the humans underground. But not all the humans became animalistic creatures. The showrunner says that this masked man is part of a group of creatures who retained some intelligence and remembered what happened with the serpents. The masked man wants to stop the serpents from being reborn, and that's why he gives Mother these cards as a warning. And that's why the entity tells Paul to destroy the cards, to hide its true snaky intentions. When the masked man tries to kill Mother, it's his last desperate attempt to prevent the return of the serpents that apparently destroyed his people. The serpents might also have made these pits, because the pits all lead to this central terminal at the center of the planet, which the showrunner compares to a subway system. So maybe the serpents used the pits to move around the planet. So thousands of years ago, there were humans on Kepler 22b. Some of them helped birth serpents and possibly worshipped them. But then the humans devolved into creatures and the serpents died out. Now humans are back on Kepler and this godlike entity is manipulating them to have the serpents born again. The cycle is starting all over. But how did humans end up on both Kepler and Earth? These cave paintings show Kepler 22b and planet Earth and a spaceship with two figures and some embryos just like mother and father's ship to Kepler. But this spaceship seems to be going from Kepler to Earth. Maybe humans first evolved on Kepler, then went to Earth. Maybe they left trying to escape the serpents. But how does the ship in an ancient cave painting look so similar to mother and father's ship thousands of years later? Remember, the Mithraic got their technology from instructions encrypted into their religious texts. They believe it was a gift from Sol. Maybe the Kepler entity gave humans this technology specifically so that they could come back to Kepler to birth more serpents. Maybe the whole Mithraic religion and the technology was created by this entity to control humans. But what is this entity? Father and mother and Tally and Mouse all miraculously return after falling down the pits to this strange fiery core. So maybe the core is the entity. Maybe this is the god Sol, a supernatural, all-powerful, psychic being of fire and light. But the showrunner says that while things may seem supernatural, they might also have a technological aspect. After all, the entity seems to hack into Mother's digital memories. She says that it's a virus that infected her systems. And the showrunner says that Mother's android body is like a 3D printer, and when she got pregnant, she was receiving digital instructions on how to make a baby serpent. The point is, the entity works like a computer with digital information, so maybe the entity is a rogue AI built by the ancient Kepler humans. A computer that got out of control and decided that it liked snakes more than it liked people, that would be similar to what happened with necromancers on Earth, with humanity destroying itself with technology. On the other hand, Campion says that everything has a soul. This entity seems connected to the dead. Ghost Tally tells Campion to kill himself so that he can be together again with his dead siblings. Maybe the entity is like a hive mind of all the creatures who ever died on Kepler. Maybe the entity is the soul of the planet. Another mystery is the prophecy. According to Mithraic scripture, there'll be an orphan boy who will lead us to build a city of peace. Paul likes to build cities, and he's an orphan because his real parents were murdered, so maybe he's the messiah. Another possibility is Campion, who's set up as a rival to Paul. By the finale, the entity speaks to Paul, but seems to want Campion dead. 
Maybe Campion will lead a faction against the entity, while Paul leads the Mithraic. The showrunner compares Campion and Paul to Romulus and Remus, and in the legend, Romulus kills Remus, then builds Rome. So will Campion or Paul kill each other? Will one of them start a new civilization? Or is this whole prophecy just more bullshit from the entity to control humanity? In the finale, Marcus discovers another Ark above Kepler, and it's full of atheist soldiers. The showrunner says the atheists hijacked this Ark from the Mithraic. So these atheists could dramatically shift the balance of power on Kepler. Marcus kills a few of them and declares himself king of the planet, setting himself up as an antagonist next season. This serpent is also a threat. The showrunner says that since the serpent was born from Mother, it's part organic and part machine, and has some of Mother's powers, like flight. What else might it be capable of? What does it want? Is it a tool of the godlike entity, or does it have a mind of its own? How will it get along with Mother and Father? Campion is set up as a leader of the kids, with Mary. How will they survive without mother and father? Will Mary reunite with Paul? Will Tempest's baby be born? Will Hunter be less of a douche? There are lots of big questions for season two. But most importantly, what does this all mean? What's this show really about? It explores beginnings and endings, and the interconnectedness of life and death. Mother says death is a part of life, and she drains the lifeblood of Otho and some androids to feed her fetus. Father teaches the kids to kill creatures so that they can eat and survive. But when Tempest kills a creature, she finds an unborn creature baby in its womb. Their crops only grow on the bones of dead serpents, and Mother's childbirth and the mythology of Taroctony evokes sacrifice. So life comes from blood and death, they're inextricably intertwined, and maybe it's that sacrifice that gives meaning to birth and life. It's also about religion and faith. Mother tries so hard to raise Campion as an atheist, but still Campion prays and develops beliefs about souls. He believes to help him cope with grief and to find meaning in this cruel chaotic world, just as humans have for thousands of years. Even Mother, the atheist android, has some religious or spiritual behaviours. She has this little shrine where she keeps objects that are special to her and make her feel connected to her dead children. She holds fruity little ceremonies with the kids that are themed around science but feel very religious. She believes in her mission and her creator like a religion, even before she gets knocked up by Milk God. So, Mother's attempts to raise a strictly rational, atheistic society seem futile. Maybe religious or spiritual feelings of some kind are just part of being a person. Of course, religion can also be evil. The Mithraic dehumanize their enemies by saying that atheists don't have souls. The second highest ranking Mithraic priest is a brutal rapist. Marcus murders people and destroys his own family in the name of his god, and a holy war destroyed the earth. Religion can be an excuse to do evil and to cause conflict. Of course, the atheists aren't crash hot either, what with their child soldiers and suicide bombers. So maybe it's organised ideology that leads to evil. Ultimately, humans have got to believe in something. And the characters in Raised by Wolves survive through their faith in each other. Caleb and Mary find strength in their belief in each other. Father and mother and the kids believe in their family. And this belief is not rational. Mother and father and Caleb and Mary aren't the biological parents of their kids. But these relationships are real because they believe in them. Like faith. And the crises in this show happen when that faith breaks. When father loses faith in mother, when Mary loses faith in Caleb, when Paul loses faith in Mary. So maybe the message of Raised by Wolves is that we don't need faith in God, but we need to believe in each other. Especially when God is an evil psychic blob who hates people and loves snakes. Humans can't reach Kepler-22b yet, but we are getting closer to Mars. This documentary on CuriosityStream tells the true story of our efforts to settle an alien world. 
CuriosityStream has thousands of documentaries about space, science, technology, and history, and you can get CuriosityStream in a bundle with Nebula. Nebula is an independent, creator-owned video site where we don't have to worry about YouTube's demonetization or the algorithm. It has exclusive content from people like Tom Scott, Tierzu, Lindsay Ellis, Wendover, and AltShiftX. At the link below, you can get Nebula and CuriosityStream for a year for just 15 bucks. You get heaps of quality documentaries and videos, and you're supporting some great creators. So sign up at curiositystream.com slash altshiftx. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks to our supporters on Patreon, including Joshua Young, Lunixix, Gabriel Harrell, Sticky, Michael Shevlin, Carlos Orellana III, and Orsi. Cheers.